So capacitors are probably the number one thing that go bad in AC units during especially the summertime. But another part that needs to be serviced or replaced, not as much as the capacitor, but is fairly common, is the contactor. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some ways that I go about testing it, diagnosing it, and ultimately replacing it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is remove the cover from my AC unit. And there are a couple of screws that need to be removed in order to take this off. So I'm gonna use this 5 16 drive. This is made by Klein. And like always, I'll have links for this along with everything else you see in the video down in the description down below. And then once those are removed, then this just slides down and out of the way. All right, so as you can see, we've got a couple of different components here. We've got our contactor over here, which is what we're interested in in this video and our capacitor over here. Now again, this is all still live. My fingers are not nearly as close as they may look in the camera. And that's because I'm gonna show you a couple of tests that I do to see if my contactor is bad. Just so you know, this contactor is not bad, but I did have an AC tech out a few weeks ago and he recommended possibly just replacing it because with these contactors here, they're covered so you can't see the contacts. So you don't know how bad they are, or how pitted they're getting. And it's been enough years where it might just be a good maintenance idea to just go ahead and replace the contactor. This is a single pole contactor. So on this side, we've got our contacts that will actually be interrupted when the thermostat is not calling for air. And then over here on this side, you'll see there's just a clean piece of metal connecting those two. And so there's always power going between those. All right, so I'm gonna take my two probes. I've got my multimeter on set to voltage. So I'm gonna test the bottom two screws here. And as you can see, we're getting 243 volts, which is right around that 240 volts that we wanna see. Now, since this isn't on, the thermostat is not calling for air, so it's not pulling down that plunger to make contact, to pass the power along to the top side. If we take our probes and put them on these two, you'll see we have zero voltage. Now that doesn't mean that there is no voltage here. This side is shunted again. So if we put a probe up on the top one on the shunted side and then go to ground, you'll see we still are getting 120 volts. All right, so that is with the thermostat not calling for air and our power is not being passed up to the top yet. So let's go ahead and turn on the thermostat, have it call for air, and then we'll check our top terminals there. All right, so now the thermostat is calling for air, so now the AC is on. You can see that this plunger is now depressed and being pulled inside of the contactor there. That's so that those two points can make contact, pass the power from down below up to the top up here. So now I'm gonna take my two probes and now I'm gonna stick it here on the top left and the top right. And as you can see, now we're getting 241, close to that 240 volts that we're looking for. And we can test this independently, make sure we're getting 120 volts on each side. And sure enough, we are. And that's because this contactor is still good. If your contactor was bad, more than likely, you're not getting good contact over here on a single pole anyway. A double pole would have one of these plungers on both sides or a single bar pulling it down. But on the single poles like this one, if your contactor was bad, you would not be getting any voltage up here on this top left leg up here. And it's not always the case that it's just bad. These are covered here. And that's another reason why I can't take a look at the contacts and see if they're bad or not. But a lot of them are just wide open to where you can see the contacts. And a lot of times bugs will work their way into those contacts. Ants are notorious for doing it to where they basically then become an insulator so that when the contacts get pulled down to pass the power from the bottom to the top, that becomes insulated to where the power does not get passed on to the top. And you think the contactor is completely bad, whereas really it's just a bug that got stuck in there. Or the contacts themselves have just become corroded and they don't conduct electricity very well. So this is probably the number one test that I would do to check to see if my contactor was bad. But let me show you another one really quickly that also can have a lot to do with whether or not this contactor will work and whether or not it's any good. All right, so I've pulled the disconnect on my AC unit, so now it's not running. But as you can see, the little plunger on the contactor is still being pulled in. And that's because the thermostat is still calling for air to be cooling the house. This is simulating a bad contactor in that we have our plunger being pulled down, our contacts are being made. But if we go and we check the top here, we don't have 240 volts anymore. And if we just check the top left over here to see if power is being passed along, connect one of the probes to that top left leg there, touch the other to ground. As you can see, 
we essentially have zero voltage. If the thermostat's calling for air, it's pulling in that plunger, making contact between the top and the bottom, then there should be power going to the top and therefore would be starting up the AC unit. Another good test to see whether or not your thermostat is providing the proper voltage in order to pull down that plunger and in order to engage the contactor. Well, what we wanna see here is we wanna see 24 volts that is coming from the thermostat to our contactor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one probe, put it on one side of the contactor on that open terminal there, and then I'm gonna find some metal on one of those spades on the right side. And as you can see, we're getting 26.9, 27 volts. So close to that 24 volts that we wanna see in order for that contactor to be engaged. So that is another good test that can be done just to make sure that the contactor is working properly as far as when the thermostat tries to engage it, that it is properly getting the voltage that it needs in order to do that. But let's say absolutely nothing is working. Maybe you are getting your 24 volts down here on both sides, but the plunger on the contactor is still not getting pulled down. Well, that's where we wanna start checking the coil that connects the two sides on the inside of this contactor to make sure that the coil itself hasn't gone bad. But in order to do this test, in order to test that coil, I need to remove the wires from both sides of the contactor. All right, so now that those are removed, now I'm gonna change my multimeter to test for resistance. So I'm just gonna take one of my probes, put it to one side of the contactor, take the other one, put it to the other side. Obviously we're getting continuity. And as you can see, we're getting about 16 ohms. So that's letting me know that the coil is in fact in good shape. You wanna have somewhere between, I would say on the low end, around nine ohms. That would probably be about the lowest I would wanna see, all the way up to 20 or 22 ohms. If you're seeing anything that's above or below that, it might be time to take a closer look at the contactor and whether it needs to be replaced. So that's a few of my favorite tests to see whether or not the contactor is good or not. Now let's get into the actual replacement of it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna disconnect power going from my house to my AC unit. Now I've got a disconnect out by my condenser outside that I just pull and that removes all power going to the AC unit. Some people may also need to turn off a circuit breaker as depending on who wired up the AC unit, you may still have power flowing to it. You also wanna make sure that the thermostat is turned off so it doesn't try and send power and calling for air. So it's always best to just make sure to turn off the disconnect and turn off any circuit breakers attributed to your AC unit or heat pump. All right, so before I always get started on a project like this, I always like to take multiple pictures of how my wiring is connected to whatever it is that I'm working on. Once that powers off, I always wanna check the bottom two legs just to make sure I do not have any power going to it. Another test that would be good just to make sure I have zero power is to go from leg to leg. So I'm gonna go from the left side to ground, zero volts. Then I'm gonna go to the right side to ground and I still have zero volts. All right, so now that I've verified the power is off, now I can remove all of the wiring from all of the points on my contactor. Now I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that the wires are going back in the correct spots. If the new contactor gets wired up incorrectly, you could seriously cause some serious damage to the AC unit. So this is a crucial part of this installation and it really just comes down to making sure that the wires get put back in the correct places. All right, so now all of the wiring has been removed from the contactor, so now all I need to do is remove the contactor from the AC unit, and in this case, there's just some screws on the bottom side here that's connecting it to the frame of the condenser. And to do that, I'm gonna use a quarter inch drive in order to remove those. Now, one thing I wanna note, this is the old one, this is the new one. When you're looking for a new contactor, you wanna make sure that the numbers match up on it. You've got some model numbers up here on top, then you also wanna make sure that you're matching up the numbers that are down here. These are the actual ratings for the contactor. Bottom line is you wanna try and find a contactor that matches up with the one that you currently have. All right, so now I'm ready to install my new contactor. So I'm just gonna take that contactor, put it back in the place where the old one was, line up those holes, and then I'm gonna take the screws that I took out and reinsert them in through the holes and tighten them down into the AC unit, tightening down the contactor into place. All right, so now that that's tightened down into place, that's where we wanna then refer back to our pictures and make sure that we put the wires in the correct spots. As you can see on the contactor, we have these terminals up here on the top. 
There are also some down on the bottom, and again, we have them on the side. And that's for these spade connectors to get connected to. And even though I had most of my yellow wires over here on the right side, most of my black wires were over here on the left side. And that's going to be very common for most AC units. But again, always refer back to your either your wiring diagram or the pictures that you take, making sure you're putting the wires back correctly. So I wanna make sure I get all of those wires up underneath of that plate. And once it's up underneath the plate, I can tighten it down. And I wanna make sure that I tighten it down nice and tight. The feed line is obviously one of the most important connections to be made on the contactor. And we definitely don't want that just coming loose. And I'll do the same for the red wire on the left side. All right, so now everything is connected to the contactor, but before I reconnect power, I always like to push the wires out of the way. Just make sure I don't have any spade connectors or ring connectors that are just hanging out somewhere. There shouldn't be any loose connections anywhere. And if I look right over here, check that out. I've got a loose spade connector, but this spade connector does not go to the contactor. That spade connector actually goes over here on the capacitor on the Herm side. And I'm guessing when I was removing one of the wires, I may have accidentally pulled up on the wiring too much and it must've just pulled that wire right off. So again, super important to make sure that not only your wires are in the correct places on the contactor and that all the wires are reconnected to it, but make sure that everything is still connected the way that it should be everywhere else in the AC unit as well. Again, there should be no loose connections anywhere. Now I can reconnect the power going to my AC unit. All right, so now I've got power going here. Now I'm gonna turn on the thermostat to call for air and make sure everything is working properly. All right, so as you saw and heard, the plunger here pulled down as it should be. And now that it has been pulled down, the contact has been made and now the AC unit is up and running properly. So this part cost me around 15 or $20 for this contactor. I've received quotes in the past of anywhere of 400, $500 plus just to replace this about $20 part. And it took me about five to 10 minutes to do so. So this might not be for everyone, especially if you don't know what you're doing and you don't feel comfortable doing it. But for me personally, this was a very easy fix for me to do myself. And as a result, I was able to save quite a bit of money. But now all that's left to do is to reinstall that panel on the AC unit, reinsert those two screws, tighten them down, holding that panel in place. And now everything is hooked back up and covered properly. Now, if you thought this video was interesting, I did a video fairly recently where I go over some of the top five things that a lot of your AC companies don't want you to know about how to diagnose, how to fix some of the regular maintenance that needs to be done in order to avoid some of those problems that come with those AC units. If you're interested in that video, I'll post a link to that video right over here and it will take you directly to it. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.